Dari. We're here in an amazing house in the middle of the rice fields in Bali for an interview with the amazing Shiva Rajaya, who's a fantastic teacher of Tantra, transformation, personal development, mastery of life. Welcome, Shiva Rajaya. <laughs> so here you are in Bali. You have this incredible look about you. You know, you have this, this beautiful, um, what do you call this? Marking on your forehead. Yeah, Shiva. Shiva marks. Shiva marks, you know, the sacred mantras adorning your body, sacred mantras all the way around the space that you're living in. You're living in this beautiful paradise. Yeah. Where did you start? Who were you? <laughs> this? What happened to you? Well, I was like, you know, just a normal lifestyle. Uh, I was a geologist in Switzerland and then I started uh, You're studying. A geologist. geologist, yeah. I come from, uh, I studied the earth. I was in the forests of Costa Rica uh -huh. doing my research there. And then I started, uh, you know, yoga has been in my life for since, ch yeah, I was a teenager. And then I started. Is that because um, of your parents? Or? No, not at all. It's no. quite unusual to be doing yoga when you're a teenager. No? Yeah, it just emerged. You know, this is where people go like, oh, that must be a past life, you know, because mm. I had a strong resonance straight away. Like while my friends were partying, I was doing my asanas with one on one with some teacher in, in my high school. So. Um, there was something that was already guiding me in that direction from early age. Yeah. And then uh, I started meeting, you know, different teachers, gurus, and then I went full on into spiritual training for about 12 years. So uh, when did that start? You had like a sort of a normal life for a while? Yeah, yeah, but it's, it's just developed itself because the more you practice, you know, when somebody gives you a meditation technique and in the beginning you go like, oh, I'm going to do five minutes a day. And then you go like, I'm going to do one hour a day. And then by when I was done, I was doing like 12 hours of meditation, <laughs> you know, a day. I locked myself in and I was a like, full on into to diving into it. So I realized this is where my passion is. This is where my life calling, where my destiny is. Yeah. And so I started diving into that. And, um, you know, the what you see here today just developed maybe seven, eight years ago when I started going to Burning Man and accessing, you know, and being in the Himalayas as well. And so there is something because being being with sadhus and being with with mystics, you know, suddenly you realize, wow, this is what I am. I'm, I'm totally part of this tribe. Mm. And uh, so it, it anchored in me a certain way of relating to life that is looking at life from a mystical point of view or perspective. So this is where it anchored itself. And, uh, you know, it's like, this for me is normal. It's like, I, I don't even think about it. You know, people go like, oh, you're topless. I go like, oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot, you know. It's, it's not something that I'm, like, coming from a rational perspective. It just feels like, it feels good. It feels natural. And sometimes I go like, oh, I want to remember a certain code or a certain energy. And then I have this material, which is very easy to write on. And I go, oh, let me write on this. Mm. You know, and then suddenly I realize my my sarong is packed with mantras and, and codes and then suddenly I want to remember another code and I go like, oh, let me write it on my, on my arm. And so I, now it becomes like a practice, it becomes something natural. But yeah. it didn't emerge from somebody telling me to do it or... But I realized that different monks or different tribes or different traditions are doing these kind of things. Like I went to a temple in, uh, in China and I realized the monks, that's what, that's what they do, you know, they are writing calligraphies all the time and then I go oh we do the same we, you know so it's it's part of the collective you know yeah yeah, yeah. it's just emerged yeah, yeah yeah I get that yeah I have to ask you about um, your name and what you're embodying as a man as an awakened man mm. you know this is really important I I've been working in the field of awakening with women for many years myself and, you know, there's been this sort of dialogue about looking for the awakened man, where is he? And, the, and then also like the path towards union within ourselves. Yeah. And then with another. So, you know, you're playing an important role as a man who's standing up and being very visible mm -hmm. and very out there with your message and with your yeah. identity, and with your being. So can you speak to that in terms of like what your what you feel that your message is for men and women, but as a man. As a man. Women, you know, and with the name Shiva, the divine yeah. masculine. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, yeah, it's all an experiment, you know. It's like uh, one day I wake up again, the name Shiva starts popping into my mind and becoming my identity. And so I try to tap into the divine essence or the divine codes of what it means to be, to be incarnating in a masculine way. Mm. And yeah, some of it can be, it's just my ego to talking, but no, it comes from a place which is a really deep mystical identification with uh, a divine energy. And so from that place, I try to tune in into, into what are the, what is the highest frequency expression that I can have at any given moment. For instance, you and I are having a conversation and I go like, okay, what's the highest potential that we have here? You know, how deep can we go? Your partner is right here, right? And we are here. And what's, what's the deepest energetic experience that we can have at any given moment? What are the fears? What are the stories? What are the things that would stop us from, from being fully present in that very moment? And you are tra trained Shakti, right? You have in this, been in this spiritual field as well for a while. So, I mean, you know that in this very moment, our hearts can just explode into a mystical experience, just like that, without even touching each other's bodies, right? We can just be like and diving deep and deep. So the commitment to express this deep resonance is there with me a lot, a lot all the time. As a man, as a man, uh, you know, first I have been in service to the feminine a lot, you know, around women coming together and tribes of, of Shaktis really activating each other. So I honor that a lot. I think that part of my role is to, to defend and, and honor that and guide men into developing more respect for, for this as well, but also to, to help identify where are the places where we are holding back as men, you know, in the masculine. And, uh, you know, I call that the male codes, you know, the brotherhood codes. Yeah. Could you share a little bit more about that for the men who might be watching that, might be watching this? Yeah. Please. Yeah. Um, yeah, so basically what it means is optimizing, you know, our minds and realigning the core values that we want to express. And the way I navigate it is very intuitive. You know, it's not like, okay, here are five, 10 values that we have to express. It's not like that. It's more like, okay, how does it feel? How do you enter into the deepest possible resonance as a, as a man? And so what we are doing right now, we are gathering as, as tribes of men to come together and kind of support each other. So some of the things that are really important, you know, to, to, to anchor is to take responsibility for what we do, with, for what we are, realize, realize that we can consciously design the way we are relating to each other, to men or to women, mm -hmm. and to our lives in, in general. And so, I, you know, I don't specifically make it, uh, make a gender distinction, because what I'm teaching is for both men and f female, male and female equal, equally. Um, but for men, yeah, there is something that is happening with uh, identifying and developing the brotherhood codes. And the brotherhood codes means how are we relating from man to man together so that we can really enter into deep uh, res resonance together yeah. instead of creating rivalry and dissonance and, you know, this kind of thing. So the, the, the code word is really brotherhood codes. This is the thing that I'm focusing on straight, yeah, very strong right now. I mean, I feel within myself and also when I've spoken to, to men about this, that there has been a sense of searching for a, a third way of being in terms of like the old patriarchal way isn't working and there's a recognition of that and it's also still embedded in, in embodied even unconsciously with all of us on yeah. some level, but it's like, so how do I be a man if it's not like this and it's not like this, what is it? And this, I've, you know, being around the Tantra field, the Tantra world, you know, I, I do get the sense of a search, a quest yeah. for many men for this new identity or this new way of being and I'm kind of not quite clear yet of what it is for yeah. them. Yeah. So much as it is for the women, it feels like the women have kind of gone ahead a little bit there. Mm -hmm. They've been doing their work for a lot longer and like there's a bit of a catch up. That's my sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it could be. Um, I don't have a clear answer about that. Mm. It's like I have the feeling that uh, you know men are on their own journey uh, and uh, trying to do to do their best. But definitely there is a search search there that is that is happening. I think that um, men are trying to uh, to find their power, find their center again, mm. and find a new set of values that they can really identify with. 
and uh, those values are going to be applied to how they relate to, to women in the future, how they relate to their own bodies, the choice that they make, you know, and uh, the consciousness that they bring into, into all that. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to male-female dynamics, it's really interesting because it's a little bit counterintuitive, you know. If, uh, like, I don't want to, f to relate to you from a place where I would put myself down. I want, you want me to be in my full power, right? And to be in my full expression. So yeah, yeah. how do I come to expressing my, my power and also my sexual energy, you know, from a place that is not offensive or not invading to you? Because this is what you want to feel. You want to feel a man who is fully embodied, oh. the mature masculine. Yeah. And so identifying the place also where there is immaturity, you know, the immature or the wounded masculine, what is it, you know? It's places of neediness or uh, lack of flexibility on an emotional level. You know, there are certain shadows that express themselves where, where men lose themselves, lose, go out of track, you know. Mm. And then there are places that are very clear, uh, deep resonance, you know, developing qualities like honesty and clarity and truth. Truth is a very big one, being able to be in your truth. It's like no matter how you're going to feel about what I'm going to say, stick to being real and being really deep and being mm. present also. Being present also is a, is a big one. Yeah. You know, so developing that, you know, if I take men and I start training them, usually those are the qualities that they will bring more into their lives. They will start from a place where they are not a bit insecure about who, who they are, and then they go like, mm. hi, this is who I am. And it's non-negotiable. You know, it's like... You know, it's great, because <laughs> I feel that straight away, and it's like, it's such, I feel more relaxed when you know who you are, yeah, I can I can relax. Exactly. It's like I feel really uneasy when you don't know who you are. I exactly. Got that sort of sense of, uh, sort of really grounded. Exactly. Erect in a way. You know? Exactly. It's like when you're that, it's like oh. Yeah. And when you're like, it's like oh, I, yeah. I don't feel safe. You know? Yeah. The safety yeah. comes from the fact that you have a man expressing his power, that gives you a sense that he he will know how to protect. Mm. He will be a space holder. Mm. Uh, you know, it goes back to tribal behaviors. It goes back like 400,000 years ago in the plains of Africa, having to, to feel the presence of a man who knows how to protect the family and, and, and have the priorities right. Mm. So, uh, yeah, this, this idea of being an anchor, you know, power postures and being like, do you know who I am? Do you have any idea how much power I have inside of me? and how much I love you, it's unconditional. Do you have any idea how much respect, depth, how deeply I feel you? We just met like five minutes ago and I know who you are. And I know how to honor you. I know how to be in your presence and enter into this deep, deep, profound resonance with all dimensions of your being. And I'm not scared to show up. I'm not scared to be my truth. I'm not here to sugarcoat anything. I'm here to show you who I am, open heart. And if you like it, stick around be in my field. If you don't, that's fine. Maybe you don't resonate with this. See, now I, I'm speaking from, from that place. I'm speaking from a place where I want you to know the depth of my, my being. I want, to know, I want you to know that this is embodied. It's real. It's a real experience. It's not some abstract concept. Oh, you call yourself Shiva. Where, where does that come from? You know, it's like because I'm God, because I'm an embodiment of something that is divine, and so are you. You're Shakti Sundari. You know, it's like, it's such a powerful statement. Yeah, so daring to go there, then suddenly everything dissolves, all the, all the stories, everything that has to do with all the, the romantic dream of a relation. No, this is different. This is a mystical union that can happen anytime. It happens between men and women. It happens between me and my brothers. It happens, it happens with this man straight away. Straight away I see him face to face. We sit in front of each other and say, I love you, brother. I'm here to defend 
and honor all aspects of your freedom and your being. I'm here to stand next to you. If we have to go to battle together, you know, it's like, and it's solid and it's like, ah, and it's something that we're ready to fight for. So if we cre can create that, that degree and that depth of partnership with each other, that's, that's how we can change the planet, you know? The shadows that might come out of you are welcome. The fears, the hesitations, anger, frustration, you know, the things that you might not be too proud of. I go like, oh, oh my God. Oh. Yeah. You know how juicy that is, you know? This is, this is juice. You look at it and you go like, oh my God, I want to run away from this. You go like, if you are partnering into something, now your emotional potential has expanded massively. Because you went to face the tiger inside of you. You say, hey, I've got a dragon in, inside of me. Let's go and meet that guy. You know, let's go and meet that thing. <laughs> and then you go together and then you arrive, oh, you know, it's like you go through the storms. And then, then you go like in the middle of the storm. This is the thing which is interesting is that in the middle of the storm, you touch bliss. You go in a point where you go like, wow, oh, I'm having a... I'm having a, a, a shadow gasm right now. <laughs> like literally you feel so real and so anchored because you're in the middle of something that is really uncomfortable. But in the stretch, you know, in the stretch is like energetic de-armoring. It's like it takes your being and breaks apart your ego and then mm -hmm. opens spaces. And so it's, it's deconstructing things that, yeah. that need to go. <laughs> you know, this is why it's the fire, you know. What I say to guys is like being exposed to female intensity is a gift. <laughs> Being exposed to female intensity is a gift. Being exposed to fire coming your way is like you are exposed to a firewall of energy that is going to purify your being. And so instead of resisting it, you go like, looks like you're angry. Great. Let me set up the timer. I give you 15 minutes and fucking blast me. Blast the shit out of me. Because a part of me maybe deserves it. Maybe the divine masculine or the, 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 the collective masculine deserves it. But it's like... If we're able to do that and be in this, in this exploration of mystical shadows, and it doesn't mean that we need to feed them, but it means that there is a part of your being, which is exactly what you describe. Who is this woman? You know, I never met her before. And you say, well, that's the wild feminine. It's the wounded feminine. It's yeah. parts of you that you are tapping into. And you are becoming a channel for something that is much vaster than yourself. Yeah, uh, yeah this is yeah. also, I get that. It's, it's like, it also feels that it's beyond me, it's yeah. beyond this. It's, it's a more collective processing yeah, yeah. of a lot of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Um, and look at what's happening between us when you when we start talking about it. Yeah. You know, before we are we are so Shiva, you live in the rice fields. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, and you have mantras on your walls, and and we're having this very polite conversation. Yeah. And suddenly we go into intensity. The fire wakes up. Suddenly there is passion. passion. Well, this is it's, tantra, you know. Yeah. It's like the difference between doing asanas and yoga, and it's very nice and sacred. And it's beautiful. When you go into tantra, you go. We're going to take you into the shadows. We are going to take you into navigating some aspects of yourself that you go like, oh my God, I'm not sure if I'm ready to go there. I say, yeah, let's go. It's going to be safe, you know. We are going to hold space for the experience to, f to feel safe. And so, you know, right now we, we are surrounded. We've got neighbors, so we cannot go into full-on emotional release. But, you know, we go into the forest and, you know, express the wild feminine. Because if you can tap into that, I trust you more in the battlefield. I trust you more as a partner, as a life partner. I want to know that you can access the depth of your being. Mm. Otherwise, it's all being really polite oh, and nice. And... Bullshit to that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know you know that. <laughs> you come from a field where you have been tapping into the Mahavidyas, all these different expressions of the goddess. Which, and some of them are really shadows. Some of them chop their own heads yeah. and the blood is coming out and they probably, yeah, you know, it's like... That's, that's an aspect of, of the feminine and the masculine as well, that uh, when we know about that and we know how to play with these extreme forces and energies, then we're in a better place as a human, as a human race. <laughs> yeah, it's using it much more consciously. And it's the same for men, because if you have a man coming and showing you his wild side, you know, be ready to show up in presence and, and holding space for that as well. Because Right now, I would say this is the, the big challenge that we have to figure out because uh, we are giving women permission to be wild. I mean, I am. In my field also, we are, we are like, come on, bring it on. We are, we are training ourselves to, be, to know how to respond to female intensity. The other way around, right now, if I go into my full, full shadow and release expression, a part of you will be like, 
yeah, that's fine, I can take it. But another part of you is, I'm out of here. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it would be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> no, because there has been, you know, it's physically dangerous. Uh, because of, that's, that's what is in the, the subconscious okay. mind or conditioning. It's like, yeah. It's, uh, still in the process of exploring that. I don't know, I don't know, yeah. Where is the full expression of the, the wild masculine? And what does it, does it look like? How can it be voiced and expressed? But of course, you know, within boundaries and limits that make it safe for everyone. Yeah, there's a place where I feel it's needed. Yeah. Somewhere that, that yeah. it is needed. Yeah, yeah. totally. In the work that you've done and the people that you've worked with, what is it that you see again and again where you'd like to say, ah, oh, people, I want you to know this. Come on, guys. Or like, oh, I just want you to know this. Mm. There must be things that repeat a lot that you can see in your clients. Yeah. In those who come. Yeah, the... The core idea is to realize that we are really conscious designers. Conscious designers of our lives. Means that instead of looking at your life and being like trying to blame circumstances and environments, you know, I know we are all born in different circumstances, but instead of being blaming environments and blaming whatever is happening around you and feeling like a victim to circumstances, you go like, okay, here's the situation that I'm facing, what am I going to do about it? And so, start waking up your powers, waking up your energies, and start realizing that you're a conscious designer of your life. It means that you can really put in place, you know, for instance, when it comes to relationships, right? You want to have a healthy, beautiful relationship, you go like, okay, here are like, five, ten pillars that I need in a relationship. I need honesty, I need clarity, I need transparency, I need passion, I need presence, I need truth, I need consideration, you know, and you anchor them. You go like, okay, here, am I considering my partner in the choice? You go like, not really. How would you feel if he was making the same choice and not considering you? Well, it would suck. It sucks. It's not nice. Okay, so how can I consider my partner? Well, Ask, mm. ask, how do you feel if I do that? You know, just ask, just consider the person. What about transparency? You know, transparency is a big one. It's like if you're not transparent with each other, you're holding back, there is all this fear. So it's like you anchor that and you realize that I can consciously design. It's not just about imposing that on somebody else. It's like, okay, what, what are the values that I want to anchor in my system? Yeah. And so if you want something to, to come into your life, just, just manifest it and bring it into existence for yourself. You go like, how do you want to relate to life, to your environment? Do you want to be in integrity? Then practice integrity. Do you want to, 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 to practice respect for your body? Then eat healthy, train your body, move your body one hour every day. That's it, you know? And so the thing to understand is that depending on the actions that you take, depending on the choice that you make, you are going to create different results. And we can consciously design our lives. You are not a victim. The victimization story is over. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it anymore. It's like somebody comes and says, no, 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 you know, tells me the story, I say, this is just a story. What are you going to do about it? You know, how are you going to start moving energies? Because otherwise we end up like being, a, uh, you know, life, life is doing that to me. I wake up in the morning and I'm sad today. You go, okay, well, you're sad. You want to be sad. It's fine. You know, it's beautiful to be sad. Sadness, there is lots of beauty in it. There is lots of bliss. The question is like, yeah, you can consciously design all that. And if there is certain things that you don't want, you know, I don't want toxicity in my life. Exclude toxic people out of your life. That's it. <laughs> don't go to toxic places. I don't want toxicity. I stop checking stupid shit on the internet. You know, it's like, you don't want toxicity. Just don't bring toxicity into your life. The same with food. And if you want positive energy, surround yourself with positive people. <laughs> you know, go to positive places. Make choices that are going to be uplifting for you. And so, look at your life like something that you are consciously designing. 
you are the architect of what's going to happen next. You decide. You know, you have the right for self-determination. Sometimes you have to fight a little bit more to express that power, to express that sovereignty, like you are the king or the queen of your existence. I'm not. I'm just an agent, you know, to help you see that inside of you. But uh, yeah, I hope you get that message. If you can remember just one thing from all these conversations is that we are the active designers, the active creators of our life. No more victim, no excuse. You are in charge, okay? <laughs> That's the idea. Yeah, what a powerful way to end. Thank you so much, Shiva Rajaya. Blessings and gratitude, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, super sweet, super fun to do that. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity to open this space to your audience. Yeah, yeah. 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 super juicy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this as inspiring and juicy as I have. And join me again next time on Heart to Heart with me, Shakti Sundari.